Hello, is your bowel doing well? Or is it having some problems? Today we're going to talk about the seven warning signs of colorectal cancer. And why is it important for you to know more about this type of tumor? Simply because it is the third most common cancer and the second most deadly. About 10% of cancer deaths are caused by this tumor. So stay tuned. I'm going to break this video into two parts. The first part is about the signs and symptoms of colon cancer. The ones you can see or feel that something's wrong, the warning signs. And in the second part, which I think is the most important part, I'm going to talk about prevention. Some things you can do to reduce your risk. What are the habits you should do? Foods you should eat to avoid this disease. I'm also going to talk about polyps and why colon cancer is increasing in younger people under the age of 50. It's going to be a very comprehensive video, so stay until the end. And tell me, do you know anyone who has had colon cancer? What part of the world are you from? Write it down below. Here we go. What are the seven warning signs to look for that might tell us something's wrong with your bowel? Symptom seven, changes in bowel habits. It's very important to know your bowel habits. Some people go to the toilet right after breakfast, others go two or three times a day. And there are others who defecate two or three times a week. What is your bowel pattern like? If you notice any changes in your bowel movements, pay attention. Bowel changes are common, but beware. By themselves, they are not alarming. However, if these changes continue or get worse, you should see a doctor. About 65% of people with bowel cancer have some changes in their bowel habits. These changes in bowel habits can vary from person to person and depend on the location, size and stage of the tumor. The stools may change consistency, color, they may start going to the bathroom more often or in some cases, much less often. The main change is that the person starts having more diarrhea unrelated to this viral infection lasts more than a few days and then becomes constipated, then has diarrhea again. Any major change in bowel habits, be alert. The sixth symptom is blood in the stool. That's why it's very important to pay attention to your stools and not to flush them right away. What kind of bleeding should you be aware of? The large intestine is divided into several parts. The ascending colon, transverse colon, descending colon, and sigmoid colon followed by the rectum and anus. The right side of the colon has a peculiarity. It is larger and its stools are liquid because one of the functions of the colon is to absorb the water that is mixed with the stool. So if the tumor is on the right side, in the ascending colon, we usually don't have symptoms of obstruction. The tumor may bleed more because anemia or your stools will change color, become black like tar, which we call Melina, which has a very foul smell. On the left side, the descending colon and the sigmoid colon are smaller and the stools are better formed. On that side, there can be a bright bleeding that drips into the toilet after a bowel movement or even when you wipe it up with toilet paper. Of course, other things can cause this, like hemorrhoids, anal fissures, or even eating beets and turning your stools red, but it's very important to make sure it's nothing serious. You can't think that bleeding is just because your hemorrhoids are bleeding. Bleeding can occur in different degrees, from small amounts of blood in the stool to severe bleeding. And why would it cause blood in the stool? Because the tumor has ulcerated, a blood vessel that feeds the tumor has bled, a wound in your bowel has developed, or you have squeezed so hard that you have increased the pressure on the bowel wall and bled. I'll say it again, Blood in the stool needs to be investigated. It doesn't necessarily mean you have colon cancer, but it's always good to check with your doctor. Symptom five, abdominal pain. If you've never had abdominal pain before and now you're experiencing severe cramps that go away and come back again and again, or even pain when defecating, which happens when the tumor affects part of the rectum, seek help. It may be excess gas, you may have changed your diet, you may be eating a lot of fiber, but if you haven't done any of these things and your pain doesn't go away, see a doctor because it could be a symptom of bowel cancer. 
Symptom number four, fatigue and tiredness. It's not that fatigue and tiredness because you slept badly, it's a longer tiredness, two weeks, a month. In colon cancer, this fatigue may be due to hidden anemia. As I said, the tumor may be bleeding slowly and you become anemic, you eat well, and you have iron prime anemia, you need to check. One of the main causes of anemia, without an obvious cause, is colorectal cancer. No, I don't have anemia. Cancer cells use a lot of energy because they have to divide quickly. This can cause fatigue, and it can also use up your nutrients, contributing to fatigue and chronic tiredness. So don't overlook this symptom. Symptom three, bloating. Abdominal bloating, or swelling, can be a common symptom of colon cancer. There are several reasons for this. It could be because the tumor is partially or completely blocking the bowel, which can lead to a buildup of gas and stool. In addition, the tumor may block the passage of food and fluids, which can also cause bloating, and this excess gas can cause colic-like abdominal pain. So it's best not to neglect it. There are many things that can cause bloating and abdominal pain, but it's always best to see a doctor if you have this unusual or frequent bloating. Symptom two, unexplained weight loss. Now, if you're on a diet and you've lost weight, that's normal. I'm talking about unexplained weight loss. You used to weigh 70 kilos and now you weigh 65 or 63. There's no change in what you're eating, you're not depressed, and you're not exercising more than you were before. Weight loss due to colorectal cancer can occur for several reasons. One being that the tumor can alter the ability to absorb nutrients and calories like a worm that sucks everything up. But the tumor can also produce certain cytokines, such as TNF-alpha, interleukins 1 and 6, which can suppress hunger and make you lose weight. The tumor may also increase the body's energy expenditure, causing you to lose muscle as well as fat. The tumor may also obstruct intestinal passage, causing nausea and vomiting. Our last, and most important symptom, the first symptom, the feeling that your bowels haven't completely emptied. This is what we call tenesmus. But first, go and like the video, because the more people like the video, the more YouTube will distribute it to people who don't have access to doctors or hospitals. Also, share the video with your friends and family. Many lives can be saved with your help, so don't be shy, share it. You go to the toilet, and even after you're done, you feel like there's something stuck in there that not everything came out that you have to go back to the toilet. So tenesmus is this uncomfortable feeling of incomplete evacuation, even after a full bowel movement, even when there's nothing left in the bowel to evacuate. This feeling of incomplete evacuation is a common symptom of bowel cancer. This is because the tumor may partially or completely block the bowel, making it feel like there is stool there that is actually the tumor. When this happens, the shape of the stool may change. They become thinner, ribbon-like, and that is because the stool passes through the middle of the tumor, creating this strange ribbon-like appearance. But very importantly, many people with colon cancer don't have any symptoms in the early stages of the disease. So having no symptoms is fine, but you should know the risk factors and assess whether or not you should have colorectal cancer screening to see if you have polyps. What are colorectal polyps? Colorectal cancer develops from certain polyps that line the lining of the colon called the mucosa. When these mucosal cells mutate, they can become colorectal polyps. Most polyps do not become cancerous, but over time, some polyps can become cancerous. It usually takes about 10 years for a polyp to become cancerous if it is not detected and removed. What are the risk factors for bowel cancer and why is it increasing in younger people? Like most diseases, bowel cancer has several factors. First, age. As we get older, our defenses weaken. A dormant polyp with a weakened immune system can become cancerous. Second, inflammatory bowel disease, such as Crohn's disease or rectocolitis. 
Inflammation of the bowel increases the risk, and a lot. One in five patients has a chance of developing colorectal cancer. Thirdly, genetic syndromes, such as Lynch syndrome, which has a high risk of colorectal cancer, or familial adenomatous polyposis, which is a multi-stage disease that also increases the risk of colorectal cancer. And I would also emphasize the family history of colorectal cancer. Father, mother, brother, somebody close to you, if you've had colorectal cancer, you should be concerned. Number four, taller people that also increases the risk. So taller people, higher chance of colon cancer. These are things that you can't change. And what risk factors are within your control that you can change? Cigarettes. Cigarettes don't just increase lung cancer, they increase stomach, bowel, mouth, bladder, and many other cancers. Alcohol also increases the risk of colorectal cancer. Sedentary lifestyle. We need to exercise. Diets low in fruits and vegetables. So low in fiber. Especially ultra-processed foods, which are not only low in fiber, but high in chemicals that you can barely read. It will increase shelf life, but on the other hand, it will decrease your health. A diet rich in processed meats, such as salami, ham, turkey blanc, mortadella, sausage, bacon, sausage, everything that nobody likes, but also too much red meat and saturated fat. So why is colon cancer increasing so much in younger people? So much so that the American Society for Preventive Medicine has lowered the age at which colonoscopies should be started from 55 to 45 for people at intermediate risk. It's simply because they're eating wrong. Too much industrialized food, not enough real food, too many sedentary people, overweight and obesity have increased a lot. So how can you protect yourself against colon cancer? Seven tips, and the last one is the most important. So stay to the end. First tip, drink plenty of fluids, especially water. When you're hydrated, your bowels work better. Avoid constipation. It helps reduce the amount of time your stools and toxins spend in contact with the lining of your colon. My second tip is to eat plenty of fruits and vegetables, which contain fiber and antioxidants. Fiber, like water, speeds up the stool and reduces the time it is in contact with the lining. It also improves intestinal flora. Of course, you should also reduce your consumption of red meat. Yes, you can eat it, but avoid excess, especially processed meats, which are high in sodium. Third tip, eat spices and foods that are natural anti-inflammatories, such as turmeric and cinnamon. Fourth tip, drink milk and dairy products. Ah, but isn't milk inflammatory? The latest evidence says no, milk is not inflammatory. In fact, there is solid research that says that milk from yogurt, cottage cheese and cheese protects against colon cancer. Of course, if you're lactose intolerant or allergic to milk protein, it's best to avoid it, right? But in principle, milk prevents it. Fifth tip, get some exercise, don't sit still. Exercise improves bowel function, regulates your hormones, insulin, estrogen, reduces inflammation in the body, can keep your weight as healthy as possible, reduces your stress, all of which helps prevent cancer. Sixth tip, avoid alcohol and smoking. And seventh tip, and the most important, get your checkup. At the very least, have your stool tested for occult blood. You can pick up traces of blood mixed in the stool that you can't see with the naked eye. But if you're over 45 and at intermediate risk, it would be more interesting to have a colonoscopy. Why intermediate risk? Because it's a high risk. People who have a family history of colorectal cancer, who have Lynch-O syndrome and others need to be screened earlier. The difference with other screening methods is that you can find a polyp and remove it before it becomes a tumor. It's different from mammography, where you find out you have cancer. Not here, you can find it before it becomes cancer, and then it's removed and you don't have it. 
What's a colonoscopy like? Prepare yourself, it's the most boring part of the test. You have to clean the whole bowel, there can't be any traces of stool, so you have to take laxatives, you have to go to the bathroom a lot until there's nothing left in the bowel. Will I feel anything during the test? No, because you'll be sedated to make it more comfortable. The doctor will insert a thin, lighted tube through your anus with a camera on the end to examine your rectum and colon. If a polyp is found, the doctor will remove it and send it for anatomic pathology. Or if there is a larger tumor, he may take a biopsy and send it for testing. How long does a colonoscopy take? Between 30 and 60 minutes. Again, colonoscopy is an important test because you can catch polyps before they become cancer. It's not to scare anybody, it's to raise awareness. The cost effectiveness of colonoscopy is extremely high. That's why rich countries where everything is done to the letter lower the age of first colonoscopy because the government, the health plans, end up spending a lot less. Early diagnosis of cervical cancer increases the chances of successful treatment and complete recovery and cure. So don't wait, take care of your bowel health and keep your body healthy. Did you like the video? Remember to share it so more people have this knowledge. And what's the next video you're going to watch? I'll leave you with my two recommendations. Remember to subscribe and see you in the next video. Thank you so much. Stay healthy.